A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Western plains and prairies of the United States thrilled to the heroic deeds of an unknown rider, a masked man who rode in the cause of justice. People of seven states felt the influence of his courageous deeds. Stories have been handed down through the years of his many adventures in the newly established American territory. Even today, the cowboys relate tales of his stirring exploits. Listen to those silver shod hoofs as they race over the hard packed roadbeds of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. When the government opened California to homesteaders, unexpected trouble arose. The Spanish had granted huge tracts of land to their countrymen, and these grants were in direct conflict with the titles of the incoming homesteaders. Now, both factions claimed ownership and were ready to defend their claims with six guns and bullets. Tragedy, such as the West had never known before, threatened the peace of two nations. At this disturbed period in our nation's history... We find the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, arriving at the top of a hill in the southern Sierra Nevadas. Oh, Silver. Oh, there, fellow. Oh, my fellow. Oh, oh. And now, now we see far ahead. And Tonto, there's someone in trouble. Oh, wagon. Wheel broke. And those people are a long ways from the nearest water. Come on, Silver. Get up, my fellow. I can come for me. Probably some homesteaders. Come on, Silver. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. That's so. The wagon's coming from the west, and yet it's the same kind of wagon that all the Easterners use. We soon find out. Hi, stranger. Hi. Oh, there, Silver. Oh, right, oh. Oh. Stranger, can you help a man in trouble? Broken wheel, huh? That ain't the main trouble. I can fix that given time. But we need water. We have plenty. I, I wouldn't ask no man for water this far from a spring, but I got my wife and young'un inside the wagon there. The, the kid ain't very well. Take a look at them, Tonto. No. Me, me give them water. I respect you're an outlaw wearing the mask, but I got precious little worth stealing, so I ain't afeard. I'm not an outlaw. Well, why are you heading east? Huh? What other way should I be heading? Didn't you come from the east? Yeah, and I'm getting back there as quick as the good Lord will let me, if if I can make it. Why? Had a home there. Not much of a place, but better than nothing. Sold it and sold most of what else we had. We staked everything on the stories of California. Land of promise, land of sunshine. A place where a man could settle down and bring up his family. Where a man could live in peace and security. Didn't you find that to be true? Uh, the government gave me the land... They didn't tell me I'd have to stand up and shoot down a couple dozen men to hold it. What do you mean? Just that. 
What's more, I ain't the only one that's having trouble. I'm going back, but there's a plenty who'll stay and fight it out. If there ain't bloodshed on Ortega's place, my name ain't Jeb Martin. Jeb? Jeb, who's the engine? He's a friend of mine. Well, what's the matter, Marthy? He gave Billy and me a drink of water, and now he's talking to little Billy inside the wagon there. Billy is smiling for the first time in two weeks. Then that engine is my friend. Stranger, I... I don't suppose you know what it means to have a sick youngster. Tonto can do more for him than most doctors. The drinking water will help him some. Hey, Jeb, don't you want water, too? Have, uh, have you got a plenty? Yes, plenty. Thank you, mister. Much obliged. I'm afeard Billy wouldn't never stand the trip east. And now that we're marooned here till I get that wagon wheel fixed, there ain't no telling what the hot sun will do to the lad. Boy, get well heap soon. What's that? Are you sure, Tonto? Uh, Tonto no fever. Give him little feller good medicine. Is he going to be all right? Uh, if Tonto says that, you may be sure it's right. Water. And my boy's life, stranger... There was only some way I could pay you. Well, I, I got some cash. I might ask a favor of you, Jim. It's done. Tell me more about the Ortega Ranch. Well, it seems that a couple of hundred thousand acres of land was given Ortega's paw by the Spanish governor. Uh, that is before the United States took over the territory. Yes? Ortega still holds that land. And if ever there was an ornery coyote, he's it. Got it from his paw and won't give way one inch to the folks that been given the same land by our own government. There have been other situations of that sort. And they've all ended in fighting? There have been some troubles, but they've generally been settled to everyone's satisfaction. But not Ortega. Gosh, no. There's 20 or 30 wagons pulled up just beyond the river that bounds his ranch on the south. Wagons belonging to pioneers? Yeah, with the government's word that they can settle on Ortega's land. They tried every way to make that critter come to terms. But he won't talk any language but the language of the six-gun and rifle. What do those people plan to do? Wait till they get some more folks there and take the land by force. Well, we ain't joining them. Even if they did drive Ortega and his men off the land, it wouldn't be permanent. No, you're quite right. It'd be just be the start of a war that would last till everyone was wiped out. I'd sooner take the risk of heading back east. California is one of the grandest parts of the whole world. But it ain't for us, stranger. I'm going to see those men who are camped near the Ortega Ranch. You'll see them all right enough. Just follow the Mojave River and you'll see them camped to the south of where it bends. Very well. You ready, Tonto? Me me ready. Deb, I'm going to make another request of you. Yeah? When your wheel is fixed, go back to California. Go back? But strange. Unless you're a quitter. Of course, there's no room in California for quitters. But I don't think men without courage would have undertaken this trip in the first place. You mean we should go fight Ortega? No. Go back and see what happens. But what's going to happen? The only law in the region is the law Ortega makes. The government double-crossed us. They should have sent troops to make sure we got what was promised us. There are other laws, and those laws will be enforced. However, I've made my second request. Do what you please about granting it. Jeb, who in the name of caution was that man? I I don't know, Martha. We can't go back there. Honey, I'm afeard we can't do nothing else. You're going back? The masked man gave us water. The engine helped our son. I told him I'd do whatever he wanted. Martha, as soon as that there wheel is fixed, we're going back. On when the Lone Ranger and Tonto came within sight of the Ortega Ranch, the homesteaders, denied their rights by Ortega, had made camp near the boundary line. And there the masked man paused to verify the statements of Jeb Martin. Meanwhile, the United States Marshal was in Ortega's ranch house, trying to persuade the stubborn landowner to act fairly. You can be fair about it, Ortega. You've got over 100,000 acres of land here. It is mine. All mine. I will not give it up. But all you're using is about 10,000 acres. The rest just goes to waste. It is mine to do with as I choose. I will not change my mind. Now look at it this way. If you persist in keeping these pioneers off the land, you won't gain anything but ill will and hard feelings. All others in your position have been fair about it. The folks from the east that have come here have done a heap of good. No. Now let me show you. What? Here. Here's a map of this section. And here's the river. You see? I see. 
Well, my land begins here. If the river is the south boundary, then it bends to form the boundary on the west. Yeah. And your land runs all the way back here. Miles of land. All the way to the line, Marcus. See. Now, if you'd let those settlers take that land away back here, near the line, you'd make everyone satisfied. And then on our recommendation, the government would be sure you'd keep the rest of the land for your own. I own all the land. It is mine. I will hold but it. But I... I have men. Many men here. Men whose fathers live here on my land before them. Men who fight for me and with me. Now, we don't want no fighting. I hold what is mine at all costs. All the way from the river to the line markers? That is right. All the way from the river to the line markers. You make things downright hard for me. Why should I care? Because there'll be trouble. Still, I do not care. I'm sorry. Let any man put foot on this side of the river, he shall trespass. The trespass is to face bullets. Senor, senor. I told you not to disturb me, senor. Two men crossed the river. What? It is true. They come this way. One is masked. Diablo, that I do not allow. I have warned them. Well, see here. There ain't to be no gunplay. You have nothing to say. Look at them, senor. You see them? Uh, I see. I call the others. Yes? Call them. We saw these intruders. I won't let you start fighting. On my land, you have nothing to say. Leola, Manuel, I go to see these masked men. I'm here to talk to you, Ortega. You stand where you are. I'm here to speak with you. Some of the men, they are ready. Uh, At your word, senor, we shoot. See what the man wants. Go back or we fire. You will not fire, Ortega. You'll not fire on me because you want to hear what I have to say. I show you. We fire? No, you watch that lawman. I myself, Ortega, will fire. You're not aiming to hit me, Ortega. You're simply trying to frighten me away. That was warning. The next shot will be closer. You tighten your finger on that trigger for another shot. I'll blast that gun from your hand. I show you. Ah, ah. I warned you. Ready, boy. You shoot, Ortega. I'll do the same for any other man that tried to shoot me. I will do. Careful. Wait. He has hurt you, senor. The bullet did not touch me. Only my gun. Ranger, never in all my life have I seen a man draw on fire like that. Aren't you a United States Marshal? I am. Then why don't you insist that Ortega make a fair deal with those people beyond the river? I've tried to. What is my own I keep? And this land is mine. Half of it would be three times as much as you can ever use or take it. It is nonetheless mine. According to the laws under which this state is governed, none of this land is yours. You can, however, retain plenty for your needs by making a fair agreement. You want to own all the land from that river a quarter mile ahead to the line miles north of here. All land between the river and the line is mine. Is that the way the land is described in your deed? It is. Is that true, Marshal? If yeah. the worst of it is, strangers, things stand right now. The courts are so mixed up, they can't decide on deeds and things. And that's true. I said it was. But how is it you put on a mask to come here? Afraid Ortega would send men across the river to get you if he's seen your face? I represent the men across the river, but I'm not with them. Huh? But if what this man has said about his deed is true... It is true. What of it? Ortega, you ought to have one chance. You are threatened? One chance. Will you make an agreement with the pioneers who need land which you will never be able to use? No. Again, I say no. Very well. And stand by the deed you hold. You'll find it of little value to you. I The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. You will recall that in the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger drama, the masked man learned from the homesteader Jeb Martin that Ortega, the ranch owner, was refusing to recognize the land grants of the federal government. The settlers from the east held at bay by the guns of Ortega's men were camped beside the Mojave River, the southern boundary of Ortega's ranch. The Lone Ranger visited Ortega, made certain that the stories he'd heard were true, then warned the landowner that he would find his title worthless. The following morning, the United States Marshal stopped at the office of the sheriff, not far from the ranch. We hear him as he tells the sheriff, Ben Burton, of his useless attempt to reason with Ortega. The critter's even more ornery than you said, Burton. I can get along with almost every man I ever met, but not with Ortega. I can understand that. He like the dog in the manger. There he sits with men starving because there ain't no land to settle on and grow crops, and him with 90,000 acres he don't need. I wish I could save you that mask, man. It's a curious thing. 
I wish I'd known what he meant by what he said to Ortega. I wish you'd been there to see him. He rid up with both his six guns holstered. And the time it took Ortega to draw the trigger, he snatched a gun and fired. His bullet knocked Ortega's gun ten feet away. Gosh. Never in my life saw anything to equal it. Say, I wonder. Eh? By any chance did he ride a white horse? Yeah. Called the critter Silver. Yeah. Why? I heard of a man like that. Where? Who is he? Is he an outlaw? I don't know who he is. Wanted by the law, though, ain't he? I don't know who he is. Then what's he go mask for? I don't know that either. Then blast it all. What do you know? Just one thing, Marshal. If that man's the man I think he is, he meant just what he said. About what? About Ortega, finding he didn't have as much as he thought he did. Why, Senor de Law? Ortega. See. Si. <laughs> so, you think there will be the fight? If there is, I... But there will not be. No? Those men already, they have gone. The settlers? Si, senor. I leave this morning at daybreak. Where'd they go? That I do not know. <laughs> I do not care. They leave with all their wagons and horses. Gosh, the poor critters. You'll never get back where they come from alive. And there ain't no other free land inside a hundred miles of here. I know it. Say, Ortega, what'd you come here for? To see what you want? Don't want nothing you got. What's more, I don't even want to see you again. That goes for me, too, you ornery coyote. I ride all this way for nothing? I don't know why you rid this way, but I don't want you. You sent for me. Like fun I did. You do? You send the note. I have it here. I sent you a note? See it? Yeah, what's it say, Marshal? Must be a mistake. I never writ this note. And what is it? Says it. If he wants to make sure he'll keep his land to report here this morning. I sent that. What the? Shocker. The mask man. The Lone Ranger. That's who it is. Uh, you needn't hold that gun on us, stranger. We ain't aiming to shoot. I'd sooner take no chance. You say you wrote that note? I did. Telling Ortega to be here and see me? Yes. I want Ortega to state before witnesses just what land he claimed. I have already said wait. that I... Sheriff, get more witnesses. Mm, yeah, all right, stranger. I'll do just that. You wait right here now. I don't know what you're up to, but I'm willing to find out. Hey, Lem, get Jim Frisbee and come in my office. All right, sir. You too, Lanny. Sure, sure. Just what's the big idea, stranger? There seems to be a lot of argument about what land Ortega owns. I have proof of what I own. I know. I show the deed to any who wishes to see it. Very well, Ortega. There'll be some men here in just a moment who wish to see the deed. Ortega showed the deed to his ranch to the witnesses called by the Lone Ranger. It clearly established his claim to all the land between the river and the boundary stakes miles to the north. Then, satisfied that he'd proved his point, Ortega returned to his home. As he rode to his ranch, he passed the deserted camp of the homesteaders. But he did not know that Tonto would lead them back that same night. It's a pond dark. I can't see a thing. Not good. I don't savvy what your scheme is. Scheme, not mine. Well, your friend's scheme, then. You do what Tonto say. Well... Start here. Dig in ground. What should we dig? Make big hole. And make other hole. Make plenty hole. Who's this coming in a wagon? Oh, oh that. Oh, that friend. The work started? Ah. I know that voice. How's your son, Jeb? Stranger, thanks to you and your partner, the engine, Billy's most well already. Good. I I come back like you said. I know you did. I was just in time to hear the men talking about how you met up with them in camp and moved them away from where they was. We haven't much time to talk, Jeb. There's a lot of work to be done between now and daybreak. Good enough. I'm ready to work. Mm. Dig hole here. The kegs are in the wagon, Tonto. Mm, not good. After Ortega stated his claims, I talked with the sheriff and the United States Marshal. You tell them scheme? Yes, and they will help us. Mm, not good. Now get the other men started digging, and then you and I will place the kegs. The 
home setters labored with all their energy under the direction of the Lone Ranger. One pit after another was dug, and at daybreak the holes extended from the dry bed of an old stream to a point where they met the river, which formed the boundary line to Ortega's land. We're almost finished with this part of our work, Tonto. Uh, you stay here and take care of things while I ride to see Ortega. That's right. And remember, at just the time we decided on, do your part. Tonto, do. Hey, stranger. Yes, Jeb? The boys are plumb wore out from working so steady. They ain't quitting, though. They're not quitters. There's just one thing they crave to know. Yes? Just what's all this digging to do with getting the land to settle on? You'll see. When Tonto gives you the word, come to Ortega's home. Shooting? You'll not need to come shooting, Jeb. There'll be no gunplay. Here, Silver. When you come, come to claim your land and settle down. Hip! Hello, Silver! The masked man left the homesteaders and rode beyond the river toward the Ortega Ranch House. His approach was noted by two mounted men, the sheriff and the United States Marshal. There he comes, Marshal. wonder if his scheme will work. The least we can do is follow his instructions and find out. Come on, Silver! There he goes, cutting for the house. Uh, Let's get moving now. Get along now. Come on, get up, get up. Come on, get up. Very well, Juan. Call your master Ortega. There is no need. I'm here. There's no use trying to persuade you to be fair, Ortega. What is my own, I keep. All the land between the river and the marked line. See, where you go from here and stay away. You're not planning to make a grab for that gun, are you? No, I... Sacre. What is... Did you hear that explosion? That's quick. No. Could not be thunder. It was a blast, Ortega, that will change everything around here. Many years ago, that river flowed through a different bed. The Arroyo is quite a ways north of here, not far from the northern boundary of your land. What of that? If the river happened to change its course, Ortega, and flow in its original bed, your land would be reduced to less than 1,000 acres. That could never happen. Perhaps you're wrong. No. No, since my father came here, the river has always been the same. Nevertheless, the river is your boundary line, your southern and western boundary. And if the river does change its course, all the land south of the old arroyo would no longer belong to you. Senor. Not even this house would be yours. What is Nor you... your stables or corral or your cultivated fields. You come here only to talk. I will not listen. I'm not here to simply talk, Ortega. I'm here to show you your mistake. Earlier, Ortega! What do you want here? Oh, looks like you're going to lose some land, Ortega. This is all a trick. It is all talk. If you think it's just talk, ride over and see how the water's going down in the river. Yeah, we had word that the river is flowing through a new course. An old course, Cheryl. It's original bed. Yeah, the old arroyo. I will not believe it. You'll have to believe when you see for yourself. That blast was arranged by the pioneers who came to settle here. Sacre, they cannot do that sort of thing. The land you own, the land you've declared before witnesses is yours, is bounded by the river and the marked line north of the river. Soon there will be less than a thousand acres there. The land is poor for crops and worse for grazing. This land is not yours now. Sheriff Marshal, tell him he's wrong. Tell him he's... He ain't wrong, Ortega. He's dead right. What's more, you better vacate this house and get off land that ain't yours. It is mine. It is Only till the last of the water runs through that riverbed. Ben, you're moving out. And there ain't a law court in the state of California would give you any claim to this land. Not when they see how your property is described in the deed. Mm, So... I am trick, huh? Ortega, you're a selfish, unreasonable man. Of all the people who were here when California became one of the United States, you're the only landowner who hasn't come to terms with the government. So you're going to pay for it. Wait, Sheriff. If Ortega wants to keep his house, his stables, and his other buildings, the land he's using for crops and grazing, and all the land he actually needs... Perhaps he'd take a new deed in exchange for his old one. Now make your choice and make it fast. I make my choice. (laughs) I have no choice. I take what you will give me. I must be content. 
You'll find, Ortega, that California will be fair with you. A darn sight more fair than you've been with California. All right. Those others. Let them have the land I do not use. Only let me keep my house in the land around it. Now you're talking sense. A dead wretch or selfish hide, it took the Lone Ranger to make you talk sense. Uh, one question, Senor the Mask. Yes? Tell me, did you know when you planned to change the river that my father did that years ago? What do you mean? The land, as it now is, is what was granted my father. <laughs> he it was. He changed the river to run far to the south to gain many thousand acres of the land. Yes, I knew. Well, doggone it. So you got your land by a swindle in the first place. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>